the all Big 12 team has been presented, as have the Big 12 awards. And, of course, there's a lot of Texas Longhorns on there. But there's enough Cowboys on there. There's just enough Cowboys on there to say that the Big 12, y'all got it right. You are locked on Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. You know we're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on Twitter at all day o state. Today we're partially brought to you by Prize Picks. Make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. You can use that code today for a first deposit match up to $100. The Big 12 awards have come out, and we projected five Cowboys. We got five Cowboys. So I, I think that works out. Now, there's a couple guys that made just simply honorable mention that um, yeah, maybe could have done a little bit more, but that's also probably a pretty good reason why some of these dudes that just ended up as the honorable mentions that know they're better should definitely come back for another year. Yes, um, I do project that we get quite a few back. Unfortunately, we're going to have some guys go. Thus far, it only seems to be one big domino. Everybody else is going to be pretty manageable. But out of all of these, these dominoes that are yet to fall, the domino that did fall is that Ollie Gordon got the love he should have received. So let's go over uh, some of the, the, the picks here. Um, obviously, Ollie Gordon, Offensive Player of the Year. Definitely got that right. Defensive Player of the Year, Tavondre Sweat from Texas. They definitely got that right. Offensive Newcomer of the Year, Adnai A.D. Mitchell from Texas. That's probably right, too. Defensive Newcomer of the Year, Austin Booker, Defensive Lineman from KU. Offensive Freshman of the Year, Rocco Becht, Iowa State. I like that one. Defensive Freshman of the Year, Anthony Hill, Jr. Once again, Texas. Uh, ben Roberts, Texas Tech. Special Teams Player of the Year, Austin McNamara from Texas Tech. Offensive Lineman of the Year, Cooper Beebe, once again from Kansas State. Defensive Lineman of the Year, Byron Murphy II out of Texas. And your Coach of the Year, Mike Gundy. And I think they got it right. I think they absolutely got this one right because it's really, really rare that any level can have this level of turnaround. After you have the season of turmoil that you did last year, and then you have the beginning of the same thing taking effect this year, and then you have to have a, you know, a couple meetings, and Chad Weiberg deserves a lot of kudos here as well. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter why. Mike Gundy was able to dive back in wholeheartedly. All that matters is that he he was able to do so. He did do exactly that, and he deserved this award. Obviously, Texas fans are up in arms about, oh, I should have went to Steve Sarkeesian. Nah. I mean, Texas has had a really good year, especially if you go off of the metric of what Texas has been previously um, over the last decade or so. Yeah. But everybody from Big 12 level kind of knows where Oklahoma State was after South Alabama. So, yeah, there's nobody, nobody that could have predicted after the South Alabama and Iowa State games that Oklahoma State was going to be playing for a Big 12 title. This is the greatest turnaround of the year. This is the greatest turnaround that Mike Gundy has ever put on a field. And this is single-handedly the best midseason turnaround I've ever seen in my entire life. And I've been asking a multitude of people who played the college game longer than I did, who coached the, the game longer than I did. And everybody says the same thing, even former Cowboys, that usually when you have this level of turmoil within a locker room, you don't typically get it back. The chances of you reeling everything back in are very, very rare. So there was a 90% chance 
that we were going to end up like, you know, four and eight, five and seven, and looking at another big portal exodus. That was definitely staring us potentially down the face. But Mike Gundy was able to put whatever differences aside, whatever ego aside, to dive back in to the building, to the facilities, to the players, to the game plan, to the playbooks, to the special teams. And this is the result. So, yeah, Texas fans can cry and whine all they want. You have more than enough representation that is deserved. And if it wasn't going to be Mike Gundy, it would have been Steve Sarkeesian. So if Mike Gundy would have lost to BYU or Houston or Bedlam, then this is not a conversation. But that's where we are. But again, uh, we have a lot of time to talk about uh, the Mike Gundy side of things. Real quick, I did want to go over some of the other guys other than Ollie Gordon. Just obviously the award side of things is definitely a very big deal. But. Let's go ahead and go on to first team, second team, because as you already know, we do have some representation all across the board here. Wherever you look at the the first team for Oklahoma State, other than Ollie Gordon, we also have Nicholas Martin. I I think that's um, pretty self-explanatory. Nicholas Martin could have, could have potentially been in the running for defensive player of the year. But Devondre Sweat did have a phenomenal season, and he's a mountain of a man. So, uh, yeah, I give it to him. All right, so other than Ollie and Nick Martin, we also had Alex Hale, which is very, very, very much deserved this season. Colin Oliver cracked in there as well. Much, much deserved. And then we had some honorable mentions as well, like Corey Black, Braden Cassidy, Dalton Cooper, Kendall Daniels, Cameron Epps, Joe Mahalski, Rashad Owens, Jake Springfield, and Alan Bowman. So by and large, I think they absolutely got this right. And, you know, you, you could have made that argument between Nick Martin and Devondre Sweat for Defense Player of the Year. But if you look at what Texas has been able to do and the fact that uh, a lot of it's starting with their defensive line, they're very good in the run game. We've gone over the, their number one in America and multiple defensive statistics. So when you factor all of that in, it definitely makes some sense here. I think they did it right. And I think they, they got mostly all the awards right. Not a big fan of doing the co thing, but I get it to some degree. I'm tracking I can get on board with this because Ollie Gordon got the award that he deserved and Mike Gundy got the award that he deserved as well. You know, we all know, is Kendall Daniels the type of talent level to be on the first or second team? Yes, he is. And we saw some of that against BYU. All right, when he was challenged, he stepped up to the occasion. Just like Mike Gundy. When Mike Gundy was challenged this year, he rose to the occasion better than I thought he could have. So, yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of the awards. I definitely think they got it right. We've got enough representation. And then you do have to factor in that Texas had 11 representatives and four award winners. But they're 11 to 1, so that, that's expected. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with this whatsoever. I think the Big 12 got this right. And the Big 12's done quite a bit right this year, which is why the third segment today is going to be a little extra spicy. But. Before we get to that, y'all, I do have to help you as much as I can with the monetization of your pockets. And Prize Picks is the best place for you to get into the action when you get to pick players. So it's not just your traditional betting. You don't have to battle thousands of other people and, and pros, sharks, whatever. You pick two to six players, more than or less than their projected stats. That's it. And then you just uh, you watch the money come. With basketball season now here, you can do combo picks. And you guys know I absolutely love this, where you can take football and basketball and combine them in the specials league, a league that is created for these specific combo projections like Kate Cunningham for basketball, Tyreek here for football. You can do that. You can grab, you know, Jalen Warren if you want as well. There's not a better way to get in on the action, and there's not a better policy in the country than the reboot policy offered by Prize Picks. That's right. If you have a player injured in the first half for football or basketball, and they don't come back in the second half, that player gets rebooted. 
Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. So make sure you go to prizepicks.com today slash locked on college and use that code locked on college all one word for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Do that today and make sure that you get in on the best daily fantasy sports anywhere. So now we get to, to, to go back. A little bit because, and, and I bring this to the fold simply because I have received quite a few messages, of course, right? And I've seen some of the comments as well that I haven't had the ability to get to quite yet in regards to people loving this show and they just wish I would lay off of my Gundy. And the conundrum there is <clears throat> there seems to be this misconception that I hate Gundy. I've said it a thousand times I don't hate Gundy. I don't even dislike Gundy. I hate that Gundy was so far removed from what was happening that he put Oklahoma State football in a precarious position moving forward. And, you know, I spent 11 months coming up with, with all of this information, and I would have loved for it not to, uh, you know, come out the way that it did, but it did, and it, it needed to happen. And I'm not saying that we had any hand in it, but let's face it, <clears throat> before Chad Weiberg's meeting with Mike Gundy in the bowels of Iowa State, Ames, Iowa locker rooms, we were two and two with a lot of disgruntled, I mean, you, you name it, athletes, student athletes, fans, former fans, uh, former parents, former players, former coaches, former whatever, current issues. We were two and two. And life wasn't looking good. And we were potentially looking at another catastrophic season. So if none of this conversation happens, does Mike Gundy rebound on his own and decide on his own to, to dive back into all this and on his own work 13, 14, 15 hours a day? Let's think about that part logically. Because if he wanted to be in the football facilities 15 hours a day again, he would have been the whole time. Mike Gundy earned the right to take that top-down CEO approach. He did. But then when it started going sideways, he should have taken himself down off of that perch and come back down into the locker room, into the facilities, and got a better diagnosis and feel for what was actually happening. It shouldn't have taken this show or any other show <clears throat> to divulge information that all the fan base should be privy to. And then have Chad Weiberg have to step in and, and make things kick up a notch. In my opinion, it should have never got that way. Mike Gundy should have seen the writing on the wall last year, right? When the season derailed and the locker room got crazy and we started having a bunch of people transferring and some people trying to get other people to transfer, not to go with them, but just to get them out of a, a, a potentially awkward situation Mike Gundy should have saw all of that happen and willingly on his own said you know what I'm gonna grab this team by the horns and I'm gonna be so involved that I'll know everything that's going on but that didn't happen that did not happen we didn't get that Gundy until Chad Weiberg's meeting with him in Ames Iowa and then they had another meeting four days later in Stillwater, Oklahoma, with donors' involvement. Then, then we saw this new 100% engaged, Mike Gundy. So to the people that are saying, I love your show, except for when you talk bad about Gundy, I don't think I've talked bad about Gundy per se. I just simply shed to light some stuff that has been going on for quite some time. So here's the deal. If Mike Gundy would have done all of this on his own, then we would have never had the South Alabama situation. We'd have never had the Iowa State situation. We'd have never had 
the, the, any of the negativity that took place almost mid mid season this year. But all of this stuff did happen. And the meetings and everything with, with Gundy, the come to Jesus meetings, they did happen. And even with all of that, I still did not think that Mike Gundy was going to be able to completely turn it around. I was happily wrong on that. But again, he earned this award. But if he earned this award, then what award does Chad Weiberg get? Nothing. And that's okay. But we, as a fan base, we need to make sure that we show Chad Weiberg as much love as physically possible because I don't think that Mike Gundy thought that Chad Weiberg had the um, um, testicular fortitude you know, to to have one of those style of meetings with Gundy. I didn't think Chad Weiberg would be willing to have one of those style of meetings with Gundy. But Chad Weiberg's not getting any awards. And that's okay, because the award that Chad Weiberg gets is Mike Gundy winning the Coach of the Year award that he deserved. It doesn't matter whether it's forced or not. Mike Gundy wanted zero parts of Dana Hogerson hired. He was forced on that hire, and it worked out best for Oklahoma State. You know, some of the other stuff that Gundy's had to get in front of, he was forced. He was pushed in front of a camera and said, you better, you better go do this. You better go say this. Every time Mike Gundy has been forced to do something, it's worked. Like, full stop. Every time Mike Gundy has been forced to do something that he didn't love, it ended up being beneficial for him and Oklahoma State. So when we talk about, you know, the mass player exodus and things of that nature, he saved a lot of that, like 90% of it. I firmly expect like 80% of this roster to come back. Will we lose some backups? Yes, like that's inevitable. That happens everywhere. I'm not hearing that we're going to lose but maybe one starter. So we're in a pretty good spot. And then there's going to be some freshmen that end up playing. But for all the people out there that say they really like the show and they like the energy and they like the delivery or whatever, but they don't like my stance on Gundy, just know I don't have any problems with my Gundy. As long as my Gundy is giving the football team and the student athletes everything that they signed up for as well. It can't just be a, a one-way street, right? I mean, you can't get players to store Oklahoma and then not deliver. Just like you can't convince Mike Gundy to do something unless it has this type of outcome. And I'm okay with it. And I actually am firmly in the camp of Mike Gundy begrudgingly was forced back into the offices, into the facilities, because, again, if he wanted to work 13 to 15 hours a day, he would be. He would have been on his own. But, again, when you are good at building companies or you're a good manager of a company, you do eventually want to get the company to a level that you can go fishing and the company's good enough to run itself. And once again, if it wouldn't have been for the NIL and transfer market era, Mike Gundy could have likely stayed in the position that he was because he does have a lot of continuity. You do have several coaches that have been here for seven years, 11 years, 13 years, 14 years. We have several. But Casey Dunn just wasn't the guy. That's really the issue here. You gave Casey Dunn way too much responsibility. He's in charge of the wide receivers. He's in charge of the offense. And he was in charge of the day-to-day -day operations. He couldn't handle it. But again, my frustration is Gundy should have saw these deficiencies and done 
last year. He should have learned to, to read the room a little bit better last year. Like, if he would have just talked to all the wide receivers, and that's it. If that's the only position group he talked to last year after the bowl game, he would have known precisely what the problems were with Casey Dunn. But now, I do firmly feel like Mike Gundy found a new love for the game. I think that begrudgingly, he said, fine, you want me to go in every day and work 13 hours a day and be involved in all the film stuff? Fine, I'll do that, Chad. I'll do that. But I really think that after a few days, Gundy was like, oh, it's kind of cool. This is kind of uh, kind of interesting. It's kind of different. He said it from his own mouth. He's doing more now than ever before. He's in year 19. And he's expressed how he's never had to do this stuff. And that's okay. Because he did do it. And it equaled this. And from what I'm gathering, he does feel a little bit rejuvenated. He does feel a little bit more reinvigorated. He is a little bit more spunky, fiery, and fun in the facilities. So if all of that is true, the next year, Oklahoma State should be projected to win 10, 11 games. We should be projected to finish top three in the new Big 12, even with Utah, Arizona, all that. But that's where we should always be. And my point was it wasn't going that way. It was not going that way. It was going the other way. And it was going that way somewhat quickly only because Mike Gundy didn't really have a pulse on what was really everybody's feelings. Mike Gundy's not here to babysit, nor does he want to, nor should he have to. But you, you, you bet too much money in Casey Dunn. That's just, that's just what it boils down to. If you would have had somebody other than Casey Dunn helping Rob Glass with some of the day-to-day -day type of stuff, then maybe we don't have this conversation. But you just put too much stock in Dunn, and it made you have to figure it out on your own. And you did. And you seemingly found a, a, another level of, of love for what you're doing. And this is exactly the Mike Gundy I wanted last year, right? As soon as the Wisconsin game was over, I was waiting for this, oh, crap. I've got to fix this, Mike Gundy. Unfortunately, we didn't get that until after Iowa State. But again, it doesn't matter because all these things did happen, but then we did get the greatest turnaround in midseason history of not only Oklahoma State, but several other places. You just you don't have this much fracturing take place and then have a lingering effect the next season. And then you come out with this result. This is rare. This is exactly why Mike Gundy deserved this award. And I hope that. There are people that absolutely hate Gundy. I do hope that even those people can see that you don't have to like Gundy. You just have to love Oklahoma State. And if you love Oklahoma State enough, when Gundy does things right, you should inherently also love the, the process that Gundy's put forth. So if you're in the Gundy, hate, Gundy hater club, you shouldn't be after this year. We just watched the greatest turnaround. It doesn't matter if it was forced or not because Mike Gundy could have easily showed up every day and still not dove in completely to figuring out how to fix stuff, right? That's, that's a, a possibility, but that didn't happen. We got this Mike Gundy. We got the reinvigorated, re-energized, ready to rock and roll Mike Gundy. So 
yeah, we we've got some uh, we've got some abilities here to take down Tejas. But before we talk about that, I also have to let you know that LinkedIn Jobs is ranked number one by small businesses. So if you're looking for employees or you know people that are looking for employees, make sure that they get hooked up and you get hooked up with LinkedIn Jobs. They have all the tools that you need to find the right professional for your team. All you got to do is create your job, okay? And then add it to the purple hiring hashtag frame. Let everybody know you're hiring and the process begins immediately. It's easy. And with all the quality candidates, 86% of small businesses say they get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows what small businesses are wearing. As far as the, the, the many, many hats nowadays, LinkedIn is here to help you find the right person and the right path. Go to LinkedIn.com slash locked on college again. That is LinkedIn.com slash locked on college, all one word. Post your job for free today. Terms and conditions do apply. Okay, so I spent, I mean, where I put my phone, I spent a ridiculous amount of time today um, listening to Texas oriented podcast and whether it be the, the Dallas Morning News or the Austin American Statesman um, or the Hook'em Horn Show, the On Texas Football Show, the On 3 Sports Show with J.D. Piquel, the number one college football show, Late Kick with Josh Pate, Texas Insider, Coffee and Football, Texas 247-365. Everything that they're talking about has nothing to do with Oklahoma State. Like, the mentions of Oklahoma State are very, very few and far between. Most of the conversations are Red River repeat would have been a better game. Most of the conversations are, you know, if X, Y, or Z would have happened, then this shouldn't be the scenario taking place. If X, Y, and Z happen, Texas is in the final four. This is the conversation that Texas people are having. Nobody's talking about Oklahoma State. Texas fans are legitimately way more afraid of the referees than Oklahoma State. So mark it down right now, take it to the bank, that if O State wins by 2 or 22 or 72, the Texas fans will immediately tell you it was all the refs. They will immediately tell you that they were only going to lose because of the ref. This is the same song and dance we're hearing from OU fans. When we lost Bedlam because Brett Yormark and the refs don't like us, you're already hearing that right now from Texas Nation. So, no matter how Oklahoma State wins or by what margin Oklahoma State wins, Texas has already decided that the only way we beat them is if the refs join Brett Yormark and they have like some secret conversations to screw Texas. So just take it to the bank right here, right now. It doesn't matter how good we play. It doesn't matter by how many points we win. If we win, it will immediately be pumped till they're blue in the face that it was all the referees. Guaranteed. They set this up preseason just like OU fans, right? Preseason OU fans were saying the only way it's not Red River is if the refs get involved. And then as soon as OU's not in the Big 12 title game, what does OU fans say? Oh, yeah, because the refs, Brett Yormark and the Big 12 and the refs just want us gone. Every Texas fan saying that didn't watch the Texas-Houston game. Miss me with that crap, because that's exactly what it is. It's a built-in excuse now for Texas fans to feel a little bit more warm and fuzzy when the game's over. That's what this is. Now, tomorrow, Friday, we're going to talk a little bit more about how we can win and how they can win. They're going to tell you it's because the refs. All right, y'all. So we're going to have for this one right here. As always, you know I love you. God bless. Go Pokes. 
Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen. 